Hey there, Steve. Hey, Kush. It's great to complete our time together as the professional relationship. You'll always be my friend, as you know. But uh, we've had a quite a run in a coach to client relationship. It's really been a privilege of mine to work with you and watch your progress over time, which has been remarkable, and take as much credit for it as I can. Thank you so much. Uh, and rightly so, rightly so. Um, I, uh, I was telling you a few weeks ago that we were coming to the end of our, you've got eight and a half years uh, together, maybe a bit longer than that, that we've been working together without a break in, you know, I've always just renewed into the next poaching agreement. And it, I felt like I wanted to mark it in some way. And I thought, what better way to do it than uh, having a conversation that we're, we're recording to maybe just reflect back on the eight and a half years and learning from you as I have done in terms of, well, how can I keep being of service? I thought this could be a really interesting conversation for people to listen into. Um, and uh, I, I mean, we, we've put aside an hour. There's no way I'm going to cover everything that you've really helped me with, but I, I hope that there's going to be a lot here that would be really helpful and a really nice reflection for both of us. Yeah, I think I think it's a great idea. And I think coaching is always about change. People want something to change when they hire a coach. They want something to get better or stronger or more, more uh, prosperous or, um, or internal change. What do you think when we first started working together, what do you, if you can think back, what was in your mind that you wanted to change that had you invest in coaching? It's such a great question, Steve. Um, and and frankly, it was about money at the time. I had done lots and lots of coaching over the years before we started working together. I think maybe 12 or 13 years I'd been involved in personal development. I'd had other coaches. I had been on programs, courses. I'd flown around the world for courses. Um, in my 20s, coaching and personal development was you know, really my only hobby or my main hobby. And so when I came to work with you, it was because a couple of years prior to that, I had decided to go into this as a professional and start coaching others. And I really enjoyed it. My growth kind of skyrocketed, but I was really struggling to make any income from it. And it seemed to me that everyone around me seemed to be struggling too. And you had this one amazing reputation for helping people to shift that. But two, I had already consumed so much content from you through the, the book, The Prosperous Coach, but all days you'd put out, I was on your email list, we'd spoken, and I got a sense of here is someone who not only can help me shift my income from coaching, but do so in a way which didn't feel unethical or sleazy or pushy. That, that was really important for me. Yeah. Um... The manipulative sleazy approach or the super salesy self-promotional over-promising kind of approach to getting clients really doesn't work. It's not because of sainthood that I recommended and helped you see a more ethical, uh, honest, straightforward way to offer your service. It's because it works better. It works faster. It connects with people. And coaches miss a, a real element of this profession, and that's the element of trust and rapport, that um, the element of safety, so that a client feels safe enough to really reveal their deepest fears and anxieties, and so they can be processed out of the system yeah that's that's so true and um you know what what i when i reflect back and i and i look at our 
coaching relationship and how it's evolved, it's really been one of, you know, deepening rapport and deepening relationship. And as that's happened, it's enabled me to get more out of the coaching. Um, you know, because frankly, I, I was afraid at the beginning, and this isn't about you, Steve. I mean, this is one of the lessons I had to learn about being a good coaching client was I was afraid of looking bad. And I think that's something that I've come to appreciate more and more on both sides of the equation, both as a client and as a coach. And I, I've got to really acknowledge you because you you really helped me always to, to um, create or you created or helped create that space of, I think in the three principles community, they call it psychological safety, right? That actually there's a space where anything can be said, anything can be discussed and it's okay. And I've, I've really tried to create that in my own programs and in my own coaching too. Um, but it's, but it's really a pre prerequisite, right? Because if, if I'm just talking about surface level things, and I remember we had a coaching session years ago, uh, early days, and I had like 10 things or something I wanted to cover. And I left the most important thing to the end. Um, and I was like trying to get through the easy stuff first. And, and I remember you said at the end of the session, Kush, don't, don't wait till the end because we might run out of time. Bring the most important thing first. And I kind of reversed it. And from that moment on, I got so much more out of our sessions because I wasn't just trying to, oh, let's quickly get through some stuff. And it was, it was safe. It was okay to, um, you know, cover whatever was the biggest issue or challenge or, or thing that I was working on. Yeah, I, I've watched you over time completely change your focus from um, how am I coming across, what do people think of me, to um, how can I really help this person, what could I do to help that person, and your focus has been on on service and usefulness as opposed to um self obsession i don't i'm not saying you were obsessed with yourself you had very common anxieties around how you were coming across in the world how did you look compared to other coaches who am i to be coaching do i have enough training and uh that just changed over time for you i don't know if you noticed it but the things you began to communicate either on social media or in your own emails to people started to be really focused on what would help people who saw this as opposed to what would I what would they think of me if they saw this and that turnaround uh, I believe is responsible for the turnaround in your prosperity and success whether you could really feel that or not i don't know if you felt that occurring it, it's it's an interesting observation I, I can see it in reflection um it, it was it's been a process over time so maybe in the moment i wasn't feeling it as a it wasn't like a one day i was obsessing about how i looked and the next day i was in pure service it's been a continual evolution and our coaching has been so helpful and and um crucial in that because we would have so many conversations where I'd say hey Steve I'm talking to this person or here's an idea I have or something and as we would brainstorm together you would help me see deeper levels of service than I had seen before and you would point me constantly to what that really meant and I, and I remember again very early days realizing that I'd read you know a book or two from you I'd listened to your audios I'd attended um, a training course you'd done in London with with Rich Litvin and I and I was like I have no idea what service means I thought I did and, and I was reflecting on on two things if I could summarize the two things that I got from eight and a half years one of them was really understanding that and what I found for me and I don't know if this is for everyone but certainly for me is at a generic level talking about service like oh be of service be helpful be useful that's a great concept, but it was only when we got into the detail where I, where I would say to you, hey, Steve, here's a client and, you know, they're struggling with their marriage or here's a client and they're, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not getting on with their boss or 
uh, here's a coach who X, Y, Z has something going on. And it was only when we would discuss those examples and, and I would say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. And you would say something along the lines of, hey, Kush, you could do that. <laughs> That's one option. Um, and, uh, and, and here's, here's another idea. And that was, that was always so great because more often than not, the, the alternative that you suggested was coming from a, a really much deeper level of service that I didn't even know existed. But then on the flip side, even if I didn't do exactly what you said, it would spark something for me on the, on those occasions where it wasn't. I was like, oh, okay, Steve, yeah, that, that I wouldn't do because it doesn't make sense for me. But no, no, that's really good because I see this. I see coming, it's a, a place to come from, to uh, go, this, this isn't like when I, when I used to work in marketing and I worked in marketing just for a couple of years um, in, in my corporate career, really early on in my corporate career. And we used to talk about customer satisfaction and I used to see service as customer satisfaction. And, and what you helped me see was like, no, no, this goes so far beyond customer satisfaction with the, with the client being okay with the service or happy with what they paid it went it went like and i and i felt this so many times to a level of just gobsmacked for for what you did um i remember i was running a men's immersion in 2015 and i casually suggested to you hey steve you got any books you could recommend that i could give to my clients i want to i want to give them something as a gift something that's really going to serve them and your book crazy good had just come out and and uh, your book, Crazy Good, had just come out. And you said, hey, why don't, I, why don't you give out Crazy Good? And I thought, oh, great. How much do I owe you? And you were like, no, no, it's a gift. And not only that, but you, I remember you individually signed. You said, give me the name of the 12 men who are on the immersion and I'll sign it to them. And I was just absolutely floored. I was blown away that you would do that. Um, you know, I wasn't an, an apprentice or anything at that, at that stage, but you went over and above to do that for me. And I remember just, and you've heard me tell this story before, before we even started working together and before I said I'd, I, I was in or anything, you sent me a bunch of books and my skeptical side, having dealt with other coaches was like, oh, this is his sales tactic. This is his strategy to get me to sign up. And he's probably got these books lying around and it's not really cost him anything, but you sent them from the States. And I looked at the postage and I think the postage was something crazy like, $60 or something, or maybe more than that, just to send these over to me. And I was like, this is, this is real money. Who, who does that? Who does that when I haven't even said I'm going to work with you? And that really, you know, and I could, I could spend this whole time we've got together talking about examples of things like that. And that's been such a great inspiration for me. And, and, you know, if I look back, you know, I want to, again, just be really thankful that you even more than what you said, you you often role model that for me. Yeah, um, I if I had known how much that postage would be, I probably would not have sent those books. But uh, I'm glad you pointed that out and made it look intentional on my part. Um, yeah, I, it's uh, we talk about that a lot. And you talk about that in your school about information versus transformation. And when I learned something just from information, from theory, the theory of service versus um, I want to get out there and live it and really do it and embrace it and come from the heart and and feel the um the utility of serving other people and how it 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 comes back to my career and my practice um that's a key element and that's one of the things you are great at is helping other people learn what you've learned and guiding them into actually doing it as opposed to trying to convince them that it's merely a good idea and you sent me um, a video of people who had been through your intensive immersion. And I was so touched by each person's description. 
it wasn't like, oh, I learned a lot and I got I got a lot of good ideas. They talked about internal change and who they were being uh, after the immersion was different than who they were walking into it. And that's when I knew um, your work really hits people hard. So anytime I, I caught you swimming in the shallows, I'll call it, too much uh, posting on Facebook, not enough service really occurring, I would call you out about that in the most loving way I could, which is usually trying to humiliate you or say something sarcastic or something that would trigger you to, so that you'd wake up and say, maybe he's right. And you were fun to coach because you were, on the one hand, resistant to uh, new ways of doing things, but on the other hand, um, open to, all right, I will test it. I might not trust it, but I've paid you enough money so that I will test it. And you would go out and do it and get a great result from experience, not from me. And then you would incorporate it in your way of being. And then I would see you doing it again and again with other people. I'd see you posting a coaching session where you really help somebody instead of posting something that says, look at me, I'm amazing. I'm great. Uh, and, and I see coaches posting things that are designed to have us think highly of them. And you, your communication started morphing toward posting what helps posting what makes a difference. And that that became who you were being for other people. And your career took off, not coincidentally, in harmony with that, in harmony with a, a, a burning desire to make a difference with the people you were working with. So in our sessions, you, you would bring me somebody you were working with who was stuck or who was resistant to the coaching or who was not respecting time with you and uh we would work on connecting with them in a, in a, a more helpful honest transformative way and not just feeling irritated about them and getting angry and uh so i watched you over time incorporate things bring them into your way of being which is ideal for a coach to see transformation occur in a client like you. And you were uh, among the very best I've ever coached at acknowledging your resistance, but also saying, and I'm open. And I'm open to look at it. And you would not just look at it in the session to make me trying to please me, but but you'd go out there and report back in the next session here's what i've done or you'd send me an email here's what i'm here's how i'm now communicating with this person and i would see yeah you got it now that's that's great i wish every client were like that i wish i had that same kind of connection that i had with you because it was ideal and i knew it was making a difference because i looked forward to sessions with you and as you know you're a coach there's no no greater feeling than to know you've made a real difference not just that they like you they approved of you they give you high marks but that their lives are changing i know the feedback from your school you did your first school and you wanted to do a school in europe for people there that was similar in concept to the school you had attended that I was doing. And you really pulled it off. And the way I know you pulled it off was because I saw feedback online from people who attended and what they were getting from it, how life was changing. So I want to acknowledge you for 
um, acknowledging resistance when it's there, but at the same time being open. That's a perfect con combination with a client. A lot of times clients will pretend they have no resistance. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Uh, uh, and um, I, I never really know whether, are they really going to do it? Is it really something they see as useful? Because they're just trying to please me. But um, you were always so honest in our sessions that it was easy to work with you. I knew when the resistance was there. Yeah. It, it's such an interesting thing here you say that we've, we've not ever spoken about this i guess but you know what when i look back what happened was and, and i don't know if i've told you this steve but when i paid you the first time it, it cleared out my business bank account so i had a business bank account i would paid a lot of my coaching expenses for my personal account but all my income from coaching was going into my business account and i, and I cleaned it out there was nothing left in it and I said to myself, right, I'm hiring Steve Chandler. This guy's got an incredible reputation. If this doesn't work, like I, I, I need to know when to call it quits, right? I don't want to call it quits yet. I'm really determined to make this work. But th this was my last roll of the dice. And when we started working together, you know, we it's different, as you know, when you work with a client and it's brand new, that it, the rapport it evolves over time. So the relationship we have now, it was it, it wasn't that at the beginning. It was it was a new relationship. And you would share stuff with me. And I did. I remember thinking, really? Oh, I don't know about that. But but because it was uh, uh, the investment of money, but also it was like, this this is it. This is the last time. This either works or, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to go back to my corporate career. And what I found much to my, um, well, I don't know if it was much to my annoyance, but it, what I found was uh, you kept being right. And I think about six months into the coaching, I was like, yeah, may, maybe maybe there's, or maybe not six months, maybe it was kind of four months in, but it was like, maybe this Steve Chandler guy knows what he's talking about. Because there were so many times you would share things with me that I was unsure about, especially at the beginning, especially first kind of six months to a year. I was like, I'm, I'm not sure. Is this really going to work? Is this right? Does this fit with how I want to do it? And I would test it and, and it would work. Now, I will also say this. Um, and, and you were open to this. I remember once telling you that certain things I wouldn't do exactly, but I'd be inspired by and I'd do something different. And you were so supportive of that too. And again, over time, we've worked out a way where I've taken what you shared and then kind of started adding my own wisdom or and, you know intuition or my flavor of things to create something new. Um, and, and what I feel is like, you have to go through that with a coach. Like you, you had to get to know me. I had to get to know you to develop that relationship. And I find that with coaches that I work with as well is like, th th this isn't an exact science. It's not a five step, do this, do this, do this to create a coaching practice or even any other change. Sometimes there's an element of figuring things out. Um, but I mean, even as even as recently as probably our last conversation, there was something that we discussed, you shared, I was looking at it in a different way, you shared something different, I was open to it, and it turned out to be a much better outcome. But that's developed over time. Yeah, I remember getting your email saying, do you ever get tired of being right? Um, after we went through, you were working with a certain client. Now, I don't consider it being right. I consider it being useful, being helpful. Is this, this might be more useful, it might have a higher level of function for you um, to come from the heart when communicating, as opposed to coming from the intellect and being right and uh, being being critical in a nice way of someone is that okay you're justified you're, that you have every justification of treating someone that way but there might be another way the heart-to-heart -heart connection that would make a greater difference and uh you were always willing to see if that was true let me test that let me see if that's true and then finding out for yourself 
and now uh, you've got a great school that's thriving and you people are signing up left and right. I was kind of hoping it would be harder for you to get clients into the school, but you had laid so much groundwork over the years of serving people pro bono. Um, and, and part of my work, what I, what I saw was he could be paid for all this great stuff he's sharing to everybody, all your 3P coaches, um, they would actually transform more if they paid you to learn this stuff. Um, because for the same reason you said, I remember when I first hired Steve Hardison, it was like, this has to work, given the amount of, and, and my inner wisdom, my gut feeling knew it would work knew he was real the real deal and it and he i would um become who i needed to be to have my life work because my life was not working at all when i hired steve hardison as he was happy to chronicle in his book um <laughs> about um if he could transform a loser like that, you know, imagine what being could do for everybody. And uh, I know that feeling of this. He's the last house on the block. This has to work for me and my family. Yeah. And um, but you took it and ran with it. You really made made a lot of good come out of it. And I love also that your your method of working with people when you work with groups is so interactive and um, so honoring where they are at any given moment. Not just, I'm the teacher, shut up and listen. I'll teach you all this good stuff and whatever you do with it, if I've got your money, I don't care. Uh, you're, you're really focused on reading the room and connecting and i know it, that happens in your immersions because i talk to people who come out of the immersion that they felt high level of participation and i believe that happened in your school too and i remember asking you about one of the teachers in your school and you said she was great because she worked with the people when she taught her master class and that was really great for them now most people they would they would judge a master class on oh he was funny he was amazing he was uh informative and your standard for this profession is is it making a difference does it include do you collaborate with the client and partner with them so the client's life changes in a dramatic way and in a way that will serve them the rest of their lives not just temporary a few tricks to make a little money short term it's like i want them to change how they're operating their entire approach and you're really committed to having people do that and uh i I'm I'm in great admiration for what you've done over the eight and a half years, and now you're moving on up like the Jeffersons. You're moving up to Steve Hardison, and I know that's you are in a hotel now. Either that, or you you got a cut rate interior decorator in, in, <laughs> order, in order to uh, save on money for Hardison. And you're not so concerned about how you look anymore with those two pictures in the back and uh, uh, that horrific green shirt you bought at the gift shop in the airport. You don't care so much. You just want to make a difference. Is, it, is this just your last attempt to humiliate me, Steve? This is just get out of your system. It's okay. It's, <laughs> it's fun for me. I like I like to uh, trash talk people from England. Yeah, yeah, because, I, uh, I, I've, I've had the pleasure of receiving. It. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're usually uptight. 
They need to listen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joke, joking aside, there, there were a couple of things I wanted to say before we finish. And we're kind of segueing into it. The, the first thing was, um, I think a lot of the work, if I had to summarize it, so one of it was you helped me go deeper into service. The, the other thing was you, you really helped me grow up. If I could summarize it, if I said, what did Steve Chandler help you do? He helped me grow up because he, there were a lot of changes, like you said, you know, worried about what people think about me being of service, et cetera. There's so many lessons we could talk about running my business like a business, not a hobby. Um, you know, um, s s being more direct with clients um, and, and they pay you because for the thing that no one else is going to say to them as opposed to being worried that they, they might not like you afterwards. I mean, there's so many lessons, but, but really these went beyond coaching lessons. And what I realized at some point in our coaching was if I was to be really, really great in my corporate career, let's say I didn't get into coaching and I'd stayed in my corporate uh, career where I was a procurement manager um, and I'd gone up the ranks there, a lot of these things were the same things I would have needed to learn in order to to do well on that side of things in that career they they weren't and there was an element of me and maybe people can relate to was like hey you know what? i'm gonna get this coaching thing going and i can ignore all this stuff over there that i don't want to deal with and when i came to coaching and especially when i hired you i was like oh i can't no everywhere i go there i am i can't leave that stuff behind so one of the things that you helped me with was was really around integrity and being my word and my word didn't mean anything when i hired you like I, I would say stuff to, to people all the time. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll see you on Saturday. And I had, you know, in my head, like, ah, oh, probably won't go. And I would just bury my head and thinking, oh, it will go away. Something will happen. I'll get out of it. And um, I, I was so petrified of being fired because like I said it was the last chance saloon. I was like, right, I'm going to make sure I show up for our calls. And we had a conversation about integrity, which was great. And you were like, just build your muscle here, build it with me. And then we can expand it out into your life, which is, what we did but the these were really life lessons yes they were helpful for me growing a coaching practice but if i wanted to be really successful in my career in my life in my marriage well integrity helps in all of that um i i, I used to be really bad at prioritization in terms of doing the thing that needs to get done first and i would procrastinate and i'm not saying i don't ever do that but I, I'm now much more focused on like, okay, well, what, what do I need to get done? If I can't get everything done, what do I need to get done? And when I was in a corporate career, whilst I was good at what I did, and I used to kind of survive on my, my skill or my intelligence, if you like, I, I was really uh, not good at managing my time. And again, that's something you've helped. This is a life skill. And if I go through so many things, th this is why, you know, and I've, I've posted this, I've said this, you've had more of a positive impact on my life than anyone, including my parents. And apologies, mom and dad, if you're watching this, right? But I mean, it's really true. I felt like it was almost a, a second parenting over the last eight and a half years. And I mean that in the most positive way of really helping me, you know, achieve a level of maturity that I hadn't. And I know you're quite well known for saying some people never graduate out of high school and I've seen that, you know, people have a certain level of growth and maturity and then they stopped. And the real power of coaching and what you demonstrated was, you know, and, and if the client's open, it's like there's there's no stone that you, that can't be turned over. There's nothing that we can't look at and change. And, and I think that was the other thing. You, you have this confidence, which you know, it wasn't selling. You, you know, this is after I paid you. It wasn't like trying to convince me of anything, but you have this confidence that, Whatever I wanted to change, no matter how far-fetched it might look for me, you knew it could be done. And over time, that really gave me, you know, something to, to hold on to, right? Like, like, well, if Steve thinks I can do it, he, you know, he's a smart guy. He, he, he's got a lot of experience. Well, I guess it can be done then. And then I would just have that and go with it. And I think that that is something I really want to thank you for. Why do you think parents... And I'm generalizing, I'm thinking of my parents and the parents of so many of my clients, but why do you think parents are not that good at um, this kind of thing, at really growing us up and teaching 
imparting life skills. You're a parent now. Um, how do you imagine being a father to your son that would be different than other people parent or how you were parented? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And, you know, I, I want to first say I do want to acknowledge my parents. Um, sure. You know, there's there's an awful lot I learned from both my mom and dad. Um, so this isn't this isn't knocking them. And, and I've oh. come as I've become a parent way more uh, grateful and appreciative of everything that they did and um, given the challenges they've had. Um, but I, I think and, and I see this with my son, it's like and, and this is the same with my wife. I can present myself in a certain way. I can do whatever. But, and, and this is the same with you and Kathy. Our, our wives will see us, you know, you know a, a lot. They'll see us behind the scenes. They, they'll see what's going on and they'll see where maybe there are um, areas of our life to grow. And I think that, so it's the same thing in terms of, I believe, in terms of being a great husband. I, it's, it's not enough to be, you know, um, o okay or whatever maybe that's not the way to say it I think being a great husband I've got to uncover those areas which are my blind spots and keep working on them because they will be exposed in a relationship and yes. I think it's the same thing with parenting and my son's only at the time of recording three and a half but what I've come to see is so many areas like one of them for me was frustration so where he wasn't listening and you know I just would get frustrated with him I might end up shouting at him and it's taken a bit of time and I've come to realize, oh, this is, this is my default way of responding to him. And that's not really effective. And I, and I will do that elsewhere where I get frustrated. And, and he's been a great um, catalyst for my own growth because I've, I realized, okay, if I want to be a good parent for him, I need to handle this. And so now, and, and I'm, I'm not perfect, but I've seen even just in the last six months or so, just when he's getting frustrated, calming myself down getting centered in myself speaking calmly to him and he re and it really makes a difference he's got a lot more centered than karma and he's learning that right and yeah. um uh, you know i th i think we teach as parents our children the things that we think we're teaching and the things where we don't realize but they're picking it up yeah exactly yeah they they notice who we're being not what we're teaching uh we and it's it's a great thing to wake up to that as a parent i i really feel great for your little boy how old is he now uh he's he's a he's coming up to three and a half i believe right now yeah and um you don't want to it's not a good look to be shouting at a three-year-old uh, all day long at home. It's it's a bad look. If we had that on video, your income would go down. Uh, so, yeah, it, they're great teachers. Kids are great teachers, and so are partners. They're great teachers. And you're right. Uh, my my flaws and my mistakes my wife is fearless in pointing those out to me and um n she's never once referred to me as the godfather of coaching and uh, in fact when she hears someone else uh make that reference she has a good laugh so uh i'm glad that you can see the application of what works in heart-centered coaching uh, applies in family life even more so. And you've got a beautiful family and um, a great career. I'm happy to hand you off to an even more powerful coach. I got an email once from a coach who said, why in the world would you ever tell someone they should work with another coach and not you? And to me, it was very simple. That coach is better. He's more powerful. He's more transformative. He's, he will, and he's not for everybody. You have to be 
so uh, courageous and open to coaching at the level of being to want to work with him. I've known people who come out of his office and say, no, I, I can't do it because he asks, he asks a lot of his clients and it was it changed my life and i'm so happy for you that you're working with him now and not just because i don't have to work with you anymore but also <laughs> because he uh he's your next level and uh it's amazing what you're going to be able to do in partnership with him so i'm really happy you're you're not giving up coaching you're just uh letting me go uh, giving me my pink slip and telling me to take a hike you're ready for the majors for the big time now well well firstly i want to say that we both have experience of uh uh of, of uh, our wives because we 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 foolishly went to dinner together the four of us some years ago and uh we just sat back and <laughs> listened to them both explain. But I, I, I'll give a little anecdote. I remember once I was telling you, hey, Steve, my wife doesn't understand about investing in coaching and why I'm spending. And I was, I was thinking you're going to relate to me. And you went, well, what? how is she right? I think it was something like that. How is she right? That question changed my life. So um, I wanted to share that and say thank you because I'm, we're kind of joking around here, but you, you, you've really been an, a, an amazing guide in that way because my initial thought in my head was like, is Steve crazy? Did he not just hear what I said? What do you mean, how is she right? Um, and I obviously didn't say that and I reflected and I came out with, well, actually this, 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 and this. And that was so helpful. Um, and I think it's useful for, for coaches to see that. A lot of coaches assume that, you know, um, there hasn't been that journey that, that I've been on or there haven't been challenges along the way that they, they have been. And in terms of working with, with Steve Hardison now, I, I really want to, again, thank you and acknowledge you. A lot of coaches wouldn't do that, but you've, you've helped me uh, see. I didn't consider hiring Steve Hardison until you said it. Um, and I remember you planted the seed a couple of years ago and you said, hey, Kush, you know, this is, you know, get to this level and then, and then work with Steve. And, and that's what we've done. And so that's been uh again i don't think a lot of coaches would do that's been amazing and a lot of people have seen a big shift I, I did a little bit of work with him over the last year and a half and a lot of people have seen a big shift in me and in my work and what i tell people is steve hardison is amazing it's incredibly powerful coaching it's it's why i'm going to be working with him and um i don't think i would have got the change and shift that i have from my work with him had it not been in large part to the work we've done together over the last eight and a half years um and and i and i've seen that too i've seen people go and have a session with him or go and have a few sessions with him and you know um it's like anything it's it's not a magic pill um and uh you've really helped me see that through our work it's very simple and, and in fact it's the same with steve hardison he, he said to me he goes i'm a very simple guy it's just follow the instructions do this don't do that and i really liked that 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 really resonates with me and i think that um you know it's you've spoken very highly of my school and my immersion programs but you know i i never fail to recommend anything that you do i know you've got your online school that's out which is it's just unbelievable i know you get just incredible feedback on that um you're you're helping me on my you know, my school and you're doing a master class you're working with i mean samuels you work with melissa ford you're on carolyn Freire jones school i mean you you still are doing a lot and supporting people and i really see you as supporting i don't know if you do this consciously or not really the next generation and i remarked to you not so long ago that i'm surprised how that everything i've learned from you for the last eight and a half years works not only does it work for me i've seen it work for so many coaches and yet it's not so well understood and um you know i asked you about this in a little video we did recently and, and I hope that for me, one of the things, you know, I feel part of your legacy is I want to make sure that this carries on spreading um, and, and with other colleagues like Kameen and Carolyn and, and Melissa um, 
to carry on lo- your legacy of, of really being of service, really raising the coaching profession. It, you know, you, you are such a great stand for the profession. Um, and I, I think that's just going to continue. Um, and, and I hope and see that this profession really does become the equivalent, Steve, of any other profession, medicine, you know, accountancy, being a lawyer, it should be, uh, and I think will be that same level. Yeah, I agree. I think it, in in most cases, with coaches like you and Steve Hardison and the people you've mentioned, Melissa, Carolyn, it already is. And it's a profession that looks kind of easy. You don't need years and years of college and certification like lawyers and doctors do. So, hey, I'll give this a try. A lot of people give it a try and then find out the hard way. No, this takes as much study and learning and practice as any of the other professions that make this level of money. And uh, people don't pay people um, randomly for no good reason. The reason coaches at your level make the money that you do is because of the service you provide. It's not an accident. It's not a scam or a Ponzi scheme. People who are looking at it from the outside are scared by it. Uh, But it's a powerful profession. It changes lives in a really dramatic way. So in some ways, even more than doctors do. Because the doctor can heal some kind of bodily dysfunction, but uh, a coach can alter the way a human being sees life and lives life forevermore. And and that's uh that's powerful, that's exciting. And and you you are a, a great role model for other coaches coming up. I'm happy for the success of your school and everything you're doing now. And uh, and it was so much fun working with you. And I look forward to just being your friend. And thank you for inviting me to be one of the teachers in your next school for a master class. And that's going to be fun. And uh, I'm really happy now. I got um, I got to see what happened for you over eight years, and it makes everything worth it. It makes uh, everything I've put in to this profession makes it worth it. Thank you. That that means so much, Steve. I have so much love for you. I I I cannot express it. Um, you, you are. Um, really the godfather of coaching your your legacy runs through everything that I do um, and uh, I, I look forward to continuing our friendship and uh, seeing you in my school you know really thank you so much I feel the same